<laughs> chapter 7, normal probability distribution. And we'll start, of course, in 7.1. This is the normal probability. Distribution. The normal probability distribution. I hope they didn't get it because someone's in the back. Hold on. Oh, it's the right one. I just decided to leave that one in the floor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for letting me go. <laughs> So everyone, the normal probability distribution, we're talking about a bell-shaped distribution. Cool? We're talking about a bell-shaped distribution, which we've seen some of these before. But now we're going to talk about the, what's the normal probability distribution. And uh, I'll actually give you a math equation for that curve there if anybody's curious about it. So you're familiar with this. Haven't we dealt with bell-shaped distributions already? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. we already done this. So 7.1 today, you're going to notice, goes pretty quick. You're going to be familiar with this. I'll present it on the board. Section 7.2 is where we're going to focus a lot of time today. Okay? So I'm going to present a problem in 7.1. This is on page 368. All right? I'm on page 368. And he put down this bell-shaped curve, and he said a graph of the normal curve is given. This is number 26. There you go. The graph of the normal curve is given. All right, now here it is. And they already have this drawn. And you're familiar with this. It's like here in the middle, you got three kick marks here three tick marks here, and then this thing really starts flattening out, but this, this bell curve really goes on forever. Well, they're defining this by the, the normal curve. They're calling this the normal curve. So from now on, we've been, previously we've been calling it a bell-shaped curve, and it is, you can keep calling it that, but we're not gonna call it the normal curve. And if you're curious, like, does that actual curve, does this have a mathematical equation? A lot of you might not worry about it, <laughs> Like, this is a stats course. This isn't a calculus course. But I know for sure there's students in this room who have actually taken calculus. I'd like to show that to you because I'm sure you're curious. So I'll make sure to give that to you anyways. So in this problem, they already put numbers down here. And they've got a negative 1 here, a 1, a 3, a 5. They've got a 7, 9, and 11 here. And they did state, hey, this is no normal curve. You have to find that value and that value from this image. What's so interesting is that a lot of you in this room already know how to do this. Now, don't worry if you're like, I don't know how to do this. We'll explain it. We'll explain it. But a lot of you are already familiar with this. This means the mean of the population, right? Mm -hmm. And there's the population. It's drawn here. These are really, if you think about it, you go, I thought you'd have a histogram here. Yeah, but this is just a representation of you know, what histograms would look like. All right? There's a lot of bell-shaped distributions in this world, like the weight of babies, the height of men, the height of women, etc. But from here, we've got to get the meaning. And remember, this is the population standard deviation. Okay? The mean. Where should that be? Five. Right in the middle. So don't agree the mean is? Five. Who knows how to get this? Ooh, I'll. It's two. Two. She says two. Excellent. How'd you do that? Because each standard deviation is two apart. She goes, each standard deviation is two apart. So you can simply, to get this standard deviation, you can go anywhere in this image and take a number on this at that location and subtract the one previous to it. And the difference right there is two. So you can take this three, subtract one, and what do you get? Two. Or you can take the 11 minus the nine, you get Two. We're talking about that's how the standard deviation is for that entire image right there, for that distribution. Cool? 
hey, uh, since this was so quick, I thought we'd extend this problem. So I'm going to go in here. I do want to point out, what are these numbers? These numbers here, when the negative 1, the 1, the 3, the 5, the 7, 9, 11, they represent something. I'm going to put x. There's some x values. They really do. When these are real life problems, they represent something in real life. Maybe the heights of men, right? Like it could be like 58 inches or 62 inches in height, etc. They could be the weight of babies, maybe like 3.3 pounds. These look made up, do you agree? It looks like the author just made up these numbers. Do you agree with me? I mean, I don't know what would go next. You know, I'm thinking maybe it's temperature in Celsius, but they do look made up. Anyways, but that's what they are. These are X's. So underneath this, I'm going to change colors. I'm going to go back to something you're familiar with, Z-scores. Now, we haven't done Z-scores for a while. So don't worry if this is kind of like foggy right now, but you'll see this day after day after day from now on, so you'll get very familiar with this. Do you remember what Z always equals in the middle? Zero. Zero. And don't worry if you didn't know that. Trust me, you'll know from now. You're like, what's the z-score right in the middle of the mean? Z is always zero. It means it's a, a z-score of zero. You're right at the mean. Z-score here? One. A z-score here? Two. The z-score here? Three. These just go negative. negative. So over and over and over on every problem we'll be doing, this is how we'll be thinking. Oh, there's some x values here in this distribution, in the real life problem. But you and I will be able to standardize them with these standardized z-scores. All right? Because do you remember the, uh, the empirical rule that 99.7% of data in a bell-shaped distribution is basically between here? 99.7%. There's a small percentage that you go what? Beyond here. Those crazy outliers. Like we talked about the height of men. You might have a, oh, there's a guy over here. This was the height of men. He's, oh, he's, he's 7 feet 6 inches tall. Right? So I always want you to think like this in terms of these z-scores. So right now in your notes, you can put down that we're entering section 7.2, and we're going to stay here for the rest of class. And this is a fun section. 7.2, it's the extension of this normal probability distribution function. Okay? So this, this you can call the normal curve. Anybody in this class interested in seeing the actual formula for that curve? <laughs> some of you may not copy this down. I get that. You're like, Psh, I don't care about that, you know? But some of you may be curious. Like, this is actually a function here, this curve right here. I'll call it f of x, and it's 1 over the square root of 2 pi times e, I'll put parentheses on this, to the negative x squared over 2. That's really what's represented by that curve. What's interesting about this curve is we're going to talk about the area under this curve. And you know what the entire area under this curve is? If you go from negative infinity to positive infinity, I was just curious, did anybody in this class take calculus 2 before? They called it an improper integral when it had infinities. Well, the area under this curve, everyone, you'll understand this, is 1. Exactly 1. The entire area. If you go from negative infinity to positive infinity, the area inside here under that curve is equal to 1. And we use that in probability because probability, what's the most we can get? 1.0, 100%. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we can use this in terms of like estimating what's the likelihood of this happening in a bell-shaped distribution. If the distribution is bell-shaped, what's the chances this could happen? You know, it's like today we'll do like uh, pregnancies and gestation periods. And we're like, OK. What's the chances that her gestation period could be 270 days or more? And we can find the odds of that. Isn't that cool? Because the area under this curve is exactly what? 1.0. Um, do you mind if I just show it to you real quick? Is this, only take is a this second. because that all of the probability adds up to 1? Is that why you were That's exactly why. Oh, right. Isn't that cool? And that's why that was designed like this. No. And I just want to show it to you because there are a few students in this class or one that actually took calculus or calculus 2. So I want to point out that you don't have to do this. I already put that equation in there. I want to see it. 
the normal curve, and I'm going to go up and hit graph. See the bell shape? Well, there's a button on this calculator that actually does the area. So I'm going to go down, see number seven? Angela, isn't that an integral? So I'm going to, I want you to integrate this, going to find the area under this curve, everyone. And I want to go from, let's say, I'm just going to go from negative five to five. And watch it shade. Ooh. And what's the area? It's going to give me the area right here. What's the area? Point nine 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 nine. Okay, what's the area under that curve? If you go, I only went from negative five to five, but if you go from negative infinity to positive infinity, the area is one. All right, so we can use this in terms of find probability and chances of things happening because we're only looking at a certain portion of the bell curve. Does that make sense? Cool. All right, so you're going to see the word area in your textbook. I didn't want area to bug you because a lot of you work the textbook. Oh, I know you do. You know, they, they say, find the area, like, oh, they're talking about under that curve. Cool. Oh, there's other ways where you can write this formula one with these in it, too. You can put it, like, divide here and divide there. I don't want to show that to you. I want to watch when I show that to you. All right, can I erase that? I just thought some of you may be curious about that. Is there really a formula for that right there? Yeah, that's it. That's it. So, so this is the standardized normal curve. We're now in section 7.2. Now, everyone, what we have to do is spend a good 10 minutes. This will be fun. And play around with the calculator. I want to make sure you're experts with this calculator before we do the application problems. Once you're an expert with the calculator, application problems are going to be a piece of cake. So I'm going to draw some bell-shaped curves on the board. I'm just going to shade a certain portion. Let's see. I think I'll shade from here to here. Negative. I'm going to give the z square here. Now I'm going to make it up. Oh, no, that's z equal to negative 2.1 right there. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say this is equal right there is z equal to 0.8. And I'm going to shade inside. So let me shade inside this bell curve here. Now, if I shaded the whole bell, do you agree I'd get an area of one? Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to find the area between there using the technology. We're going to use a calculator. What did they do back 30 years ago, everyone? Like in my day when I had to do this, I took this. I had to look in the back of the book. They had tables. Are those tables still there? Yes. So if anybody in here prefers a table over the calculator, let me know. You can still look at the tables. We're going to use a technology because it's real easy. If there's one button, you're going to use it over and over and over again. It's called normal CDM. All right. And that stands for the normal cumulative distribution function, if you're curious. The normal cumulative distribution function. Why is it cumulative? Because it's cumulative. It'll sum all the region between the two z-scores. All you have to do is... Put your left C score here. Lower Z, or if you want to say left Z, because isn't it on the left? Mm -hmm. So when you can write lower zero, then I'll put a comma. Then you're going to put your upper Z. If you don't like the word upper, you could just say the right Z. <laughs> then here you're going to have to tell me what's the mean Z score, and then here you're going to have to tell me what's the standard deviation of a Z score. Well, these are going to be the same two numbers every time. Could you tell me real quickly in a bell shape, what's z equal to right here at the mean? Zero. So you know what you're going to put here every time? A zero. Every time. Because what's the mean of z? Right there. Z is always zero right at the mean. What was the distance, Holland, between the two tick marks if you had a z equal to zero right there? And what's z equal to right here? One. So what's the standard deviation of all z's? One. One minus zero, one. So every time we'll just put this. Cool. This is going to be real easy. We'll enter the left Z score and the right Z score. So we got to find that button. Do you remember where binome CDF was? Yeah. It's in the same menu. There's a menu called distribution. So would you go find it? I'll do it myself. I'm going to hit the lights. I'm going to go to second bars. Second bars. I should hit it on the poster. Second. Bars gives you distribution, D-I-S-T-R, distribution menu. And I'm going to go there, and we're looking for normal CDF. 
No. Okay. Is it one or two? Hey, if you're interested, never ever hit one. I'll repeat that. Never ever hit one. We're always going to use two over and over and over again. On your next test, you'll probably hit number two 25 times. It's fun. All right, so we'll go in here. And what's my lower z score there? Negative 2.1. Negative 2.1. I put the comma, the comma's above the 7. What's the next z score? 0 0.8. I can just put 0 0.8, right? Make sure you get that little decimal point in there. Hit the comma, and then 0, comma, 1. Everyone, this should tell me the area under that curve. It's not going to be 1.0 because 1.0 would mean what? I shade everything. So this is going to give me that proportion of, and here's a new word I want to say, proportion. This is the proportion of the area under that curve. Because proportion, we can think probability, right? Mm -hmm. And how much is it? Ooh, what percent of that curve is shaded? 77%. 77%. And you can think of that as a probability. You can think of it as a percentage. Isn't that cool? 77%. So I'm going to put it here. Now you have 2.1, 0.8. And we're saying, okay, you got 70.77. If you want to write it as a percentage, absolutely. Because we're going to be dealing with probability questions. If the 77% of the babies that were born were between this weight and this weight. That's what we're going to be talking about. It's kind of neat. But it has to be a bell-shaped distribution, right? Not all distributions are bell-shaped. But weight of babies, height of men, height of women, IQ scores, things like that. Oh, go ahead, Art. No, I was checking if the, both the Z's uh, scores, the lower and upper, are like same. The difference is negative 2.1, the other upper one is 2.1. Would it be 1 or not, the area? Yeah, so if I did negative 2.1 and, and then... Upper is 2.1. Oh, let's see what we get. This should be very close to... He's just curious. This should be really close to 100. 100. But it won't be 100, will it? 